Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a Raspberry Pi 4 8GB model starter kit from Lavist. Now you can pick this up on Amazon for around $120 and the Raspberry Pi 4 8GB model is around $75 by itself so I wanted to see if this would really be worth it. This kit supposedly comes with everything we need to get up and running with our Raspberry Pi 4 from a case, heatsink, HDMI cables, USB Type-C, and even a 32GB micro SD card flashed with Raspbian or Raspberry Pi OS as it's known now. So in this video we're going to do a quick unboxing, we'll do an assembly, I'll go ahead and boot this up and I'll let you know if it's going to be worth the price or not. So first things first, right off the top we have the Raspberry Pi 4 8GB model here. We'll get a little deeper comes with a pretty hefty little manual. I guess it has the assembly instructions and it also includes some different Raspberry Pi projects. And underneath this little flap here we have the rest of the kit. Looks like we have our USB Type-C 5 volt 3 amp power supply and this does have a switch on the cable so you can turn the power on and off right there if you'd like to. Two HDMI cables for the Raspberry Pi 4. We have micro HDMI on one side and full size on the other. We also get the red and white Lavist Pi 4 case, and actually this thing looks pretty cool. It's just a basic plastic case with some acrylic on the top, but I think it looks pretty neat. Next up, we have this beefy aluminum heatsink with dual fans. This thing will definitely allow us to overclock our Raspberry Pi to the maximum and keep it there all day. We get a screwdriver to assemble everything, and our 32 gigabyte micro SD card. This is a SanDisk card with Raspbian pre-installed, otherwise known as Raspberry Pi OS. They also include a micro SD card reader in case you want to flash a different operating system to that included card. So far everything's looking pretty nice. We got our Raspberry Pi, our case, and our power supply here. Does have that switch, 5 volt, 3 amp USB type C. Should give us plenty of power for the Pi 4. Dual micro HDMI cables, but the one thing I'm really digging here is this heatsink. Dual RGB fans, it is fully aluminum and this sits right on top of the Pi. It'll make contact with the CPU, the RAM, and the USB controller chip to keep that Pi cool. Even at the stock clocks, this would be great to have, but seeing how beefy it is, we'll definitely be able to overclock with this. Assembly on this kit is super easy and one thing I noticed was the ventilation up top here with the included case, but they also provide one that's totally clean. If you don't like those ventilation holes here on the plastic case that's included, you can always swap it out, but I personally like the way the design is set up. And it's definitely going to allow some air in there to that heatsink. So first things first, we need to get the Pi unboxed. Now the box itself does say this is an 8GB model, but another way to tell is to take a look at the RAM chip, and if it says D9ZCL, you know it's the 8GB model. And this one here definitely contains 8 gigs of RAM. Okay, so the heatsink here is actually just going to sit right on top of the Raspberry Pi inside of the case, and your screws are going to go through the heatsink mounting holes through the Raspberry Pi and hold everything inside of the case. But you do want to install this properly, and they have included these little thermal pads. We have three of them here. They're a little tedious to peel off, so I'm going to do this off camera, but I do need to add one to the CPU, the RAM chip, and the USB controller on the Raspberry Pi 4. Alright, so I've got the thermal conductive pads in place, CPU, RAM chip, and the USB controller. With these little pads, they are covered with both sides. They have plastic on each side. Make sure you peel both sides off. And instead of adding them to the heatsink, I've just placed them on the Pi so I know they're going to be in the correct location when I put that heatsink down. You're just going to put a little bit of angle on it when you're putting it in here, and just line up that 3.5mm audio jack. Looks like it sits in here really nicely. All of my ports are lining up. Now we need to throw that heatsink in here. It only goes one way. It's going to sit right on top of the Raspberry Pi, and you're going to grab the included screws. They're going to go through the heatsink, through the Raspberry Pi mounting holes, and into the case. These are not threaded, so you will have to put a little bit of pressure on it. Just snug them down, but don't over tighten them. And we need to do this on all four corners of the Raspberry Pi. So I've just snugged down all four corners here, and this is going to push that heatsink down on the Raspberry Pi, and in turn it's also going to keep the Raspberry Pi and heatsink mounted inside of the case. Now what I've done for the fans is just route the wires to make it look a little cleaner, and it's really easy to plug these in. We're going to go 5 volt and ground, and here's a little on-screen diagram for that, but it's also included in the instructions with the kit. And the last thing that's left to do for the assembly is just pop the top right on the case. It's just got some clips on it. Snaps right on. You'll know it's on there. Always just double check that all of my ports are lining up. 
And now it's time to insert the SD card into the Raspberry Pi 4. And we have full access to that micro SD card slot on the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and grab a monitor, keyboard, and we'll get this booted up for the first time. All right, so I've got my keyboard, mouse, and monitor set up. I'm going to plug in my HDMI. If you're using a single monitor with the Raspberry Pi 4, plug the HDMI into the one that's closest to the USB Type-C. Also plug in my power here. Make sure I got my keyboard and everything plugged in. And I'll turn the switch on. As you can see, these fans have lit up. They're RGB, so they will change color. I mean, there's no way to adjust it, but it'll constantly be cycling through color. Just adds a little more to this case. And by the way, if you want to shut the Raspberry Pi 4 down, don't just hit the button on the power supply. Make sure you shut it down through software. You can just go to the start menu and shut down. Then you can turn that power off. You don't want to corrupt the SD card. So the first thing I'm noticing here is a little bit of fan noise, and that's because we're hooked up to 5 volts. This is going to give us the maximum performance that these little fans can put out. But we can swap this over to 3.3 volts just by switching that positive to a different GPIO pin, and it's going to make this case almost completely silent. So all you're going to do is keep that black wire, the ground, on the ground, and move the red wire over to the 3 volt pin on the Raspberry Pi 4. So far so good, this has been working just fine like a Raspberry Pi 4 should, but I really want to see how this heatsink cools inside of this case. I've left it at 3.3 volts, so we have a very quiet operation here, and I'm running a little test called Stressberry. What this is going to do is max out that CPU, all four cores, for around 10 minutes. It's going to give me some readings. We're going to do it at the stock clocks, which is 1.5 gigahertz. Then I'm going to overclock the Raspberry Pi to 2.1 and see if we can still keep it under that thermal threshold, which is 85 degrees Celsius, because when the Raspberry Pi hits that temperature, it will underclock the CPU and you'll lose a lot of performance. So once this is finished, I'm going to create a little comparison chart and just see how well this does cool at the stock clocks versus overclocked. All right, so the results are in. Stock clocks of 1.5 gigahertz, we hit a max of 58.4 degrees Celsius, way under that thermal throttle. And with the overclock of 2.1 gigahertz, we hit a maximum of 68.7 degrees Celsius, much higher than stock, but as expected because we have that much higher overclock. And keep in mind, we had the fans at the silent setting, 3.3 volts. So if you don't mind a little bit of fan noise, you can bump this up to 5 volts and get better cooling than this. But either way you look at it, this still keeps the Pi under that thermal threshold, even overclocked to 2.1 gigahertz. So is this kit worth picking up if you're in the market for a Raspberry Pi 4 8 gigabyte model? Personally, I really do think so. Over on the left hand side, I've just put together a do-it-yourself kit from Amazon. I've got the cheapest stuff with free shipping using Prime here. The kit we took a look at in this video goes for $119.97 on Amazon, free shipping if you have Prime. And as of making this video, it also has that 5% off deal. If you go to Amazon, you can click on and get 5% off when it's in your basket, so it's around $114. And piecing something like this together on Amazon using the cheapest stuff with Prime shipping, $123.49. And the plastic case I found really doesn't even have ventilation on it. So yeah, I mean... If you're new to the Raspberry Pi 4 and you've been looking to pick up an 8GB model, I'd say that this kit is totally worth it. It's got a quality power supply, the HDMI cables seem fine, the case is plastic but it does come with that nice cooler, it's not as great as something like the Argon 1 case, but you really can't complain for the price here. But that's pretty much it for this one, really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in picking up one of these starter kits, either the 8GB model, 4GB or 2, I'll leave some links in the description. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.